welcome to you from The Hague. My name is Muayn Rabbani and I will be hosting this event. Today's episode, jointly hosted by the Lutfiya Rabbani Foundation and the International Documentary Film Festival Amsterdam, will discuss the fifth story, Al Qissa Al Khamisa, a documentary that explores Iraq's recent history of uninterrupted war and conflict through a series of biographical sketches. It was awarded the Fipreski Prize in 2020, 2020 for, in the jury's words, its strong documentation about the effects of war on human beings with a poetic approach that bewilders and gives a spectator the possibility to share in the feelings of the people. بعمري 11 صرت ألزم سلاحي بلاستيكي أو أهدد الطيارات الهليكوبتر اللي تحلق فوق أنا بشكل مستمر قالوا الطيارات الأمريكية راح تقصر بيتكم فبقيت كل ما أشوفها أنهزم وإذا بيوم الطيارة تفتر فوق بيتنا رفعت سلاحي من جديد وتحداهم وإذا بها هاي المرة فاجأتني وطلق الصاروخ علي جسمي تخشب بمكانه منتظر الصاروخ وإذا بي وقع قريب علي وقتل أربع أشخاص من جيش المهدي ركضت عليهم شفت جسمهم متفحم والدخان يطلع من عنده With us, once again with hair, is fifth story director Ahmed Abid. An Iraqi filmmaker from Baghdad, he obtained his professional start as a member of the independent Iraqi Film Center. His previous co- accomplishments include Birds of Sinjar, which in 2019 won the Best in Journalism Award at the BBC Arabic Festival. The fifth story is Ahmed's first feature film, and he joins us from Baghdad. Also with us is fifth story producer Duay Haffar. A sociologist by training, he was previously a commissioning producer with Al Jazeera Documentary Channel, where he was responsible for the production process of numerous documentary films. Originally from Aleppo, Syria, Luay is currently an independent producer and creative consultant and is working on a documentary about displacement and demographic change as a result of the conflict in Syria. Luay joins us from Istanbul. And we are also fortunate to be joined by the co-sponsor of this discussion, ITFA Artistic Director, Arwan Ayrabiya. Originally from the Syrian town of Homs, he co-founded Syria's first independent documentary production company, and in 2008 established Docsbox, which became the Arab world's leading documentary festival. Arwa has additionally produced numerous award-winning documentaries and has won awards at Sundance, Cannes, and elsewhere. Imprisoned in Damascus in 2012, an international campaign by award-winning actors and directors helped secure his release. He thereafter continued his work in Europe and since 2018 has been at ITFA. This discussion will be followed by an opportunity for audience questions. So feel free to submit your questions at any time via the Q&A function on your Zoom screen. Ahmed, Luay, and Arwa, it's a real pleasure to have this opportunity to speak with you. Ahmed, if I could start with you, uh, please explain the meaning of the title, The Fifth Story. Does it refer to your story, a story of a more recent conflict in Iraq, or perhaps something else? Okay. بداية شكرا لكم شكرا جزيلا على هاي الاستضافة الرائعة القصة الخامسة هي قصة الشخصية اللي بديت بيها سنة 2003 واللي هي تعكس قصة بلد كامل هاي القصة مليئة بالهواجس مليئة بالخوف مليئة بالمتغيرات اللي اللي طرأت علينا بشكل سريع بشكل جنوني Yeah, I should just point out that um... 
No, I will be translating the questions into Arabic and I will translate Ahmed's responses into um, English. So he was saying the fifth story refers to his own personal story. And it's a story that commenced in 2003. And it's a story full of challenges, of fear, of rapid and unexpected uh, change during the period since 2003. Okay. هاي القصة هي قصة طفل بداها وهو بس بمجرد انه هو يعكس مشاعره ويعكس ما كان يشوفه وما كان يشاهده بتلك اللحظة خلال الحرب سنة 2003 طبعا كان المشهد جنوني بطريقة مرعبة صوت الطيران وصوت القنابل وانا طفل عمري 9 سنوات مشهد غريب عجيب مشهد دراماتيكي صراحة اللي صار وياي حتى اكو لحظه من اللحظات اي ثينك بديت اكتب بهاي القصه هو صوت لقنبله غريبه تشبه صوت البقره صوت بقره بس ضخم على مستوى مدينه كامله يو نو ف احمد از وانس اجين امفيسايزنج ذات ذس از ا ستوري ذات كومنسد ان ان 2003 وين هي واز ا 9 يير اولد تشايلد and he was in the situation of uh, bombing and and the terrifying rapid changes that were taking place and he feels that he in fact began writing the fifth story then and he remembers also sounds of very strange um, uh, bombs he refers to one that sounded more like the noise of a cow except it enveloped the city in its entirety هو هو اللي خلانا بهاي اللحظة أخلق هاي القصص بالليل وميض القصف يدخل علي بالغرفة مالتي طبعا كنت ما أقدر أنام خلال 21 يوم فبقيت أكتب هاي القصص صحيت لقيت نفسي أنه أنا كاتب خمس قصص وكل هاي الأبطال وكل أبطال هاي القصص هم يموتون بالنهاية فبالتالي هاي القصة بعد ما كبرت بهذا عمري بسن ال 26 سنة اكتشفت بانه لا هاي القصص هي العفو هاي القصه الخامسه اللي اللي البطل مالتها الوحيد اللي ما مات وهاي القصص الاربعه اللي كتبتهم البطل بهم مات بالاخير فاكتشفت بانه هاي القصه هي تعكس واقعنا هاي القصه هي تعكس ما كان يشعر بهذا الطفل على بلد كامل لانه هاي المشاعر اللي كنت احس بيها اللي هي اللي تجتمع بالخوف وبعدين يليها الغضب والثورة بس بالبداية الخوف الخوف هو هذا اللي بدأ يخلق هذا النوع البحث أنه يخليني أبحث أكثر أبحث أكثر عن أنه شنو هذا الخوف منين جاي يجي هذا الخوف ليش هذا اللي جاي يصير فأعتقد هذا اللي خلاني أكتب هاي القصص الأربعة اللي خليت بطل بهم يبقى النهاية so I'll, I'll summarize, but um, he refers once again to the 2003 war and the terror of the constant bombing that prevented him from, from sleeping for 21 straight nights. And it was then that he began writing these stories. And it was, um, Ahmed, if I understood you correctly, it was the hero of the fifth story who survived. And that served as the inspiration and what you've done now is take these childhood stories and this um, experience of the years of fear and terror that you and the, and the entire society experienced in Iraq and try to translate them to the screen in the form of, in the form of this documentary. Uh, okay. Okay. اوكي لا بس اكمل هاي الجزئيه تفضل طبعا بعدها بعدها اخترقني هذا هذا الشعور الغريب اللي هو الغضب بعد ما كبرت طبعا وصار وصرت مراهق بنص هاي المشاهد القتال اللي اللي اللي, اللي, اللي تصير يوميه بمدينتنا والى اخره اعتقد هذا الغضب هو اللي خلى هاي القصه الخامسه يعني تثبت اكثر بداخلي ويكون لها اكثر وجود بداخلي بعدها بعد هذا الغضب وبعد هذا الخوف اللي شفته سنه 2011 بديت اشعر بانه اكو شيء بداخلي يريد يخرج اكو شيء بداخلي يريد يطلع وهو 
انه بديت افكر او بديت ادخل بالثوره، بديت اي مظاهرات تصير ادخل بيها. فبالتالي شفت بانه هاي القصه الخامسه هي تعكس ماضي وحاضر لبلد كامل من خلال طفل اوكي شاهد حرب معينه وحرب واحده بهذا البلد. Hmm. So he he had been explaining how you know the 2003 um, uh, war commenced when he was nine years old. He's now 26, but the real turning point for him came in 2011 when, um, uh, as a young man, the earlier feelings of of fear and terror began to translate into anger and rage at the situation. in which Iraq found itself, not just him personally, but the entire uh, society in Iraq. And it was at this point also that he began participating in, in many of the protests and demonstrations that were taking place in, in his hometown of, of Baghdad and, and elsewhere in Iraq. And he sees the fifth story as, as a symbol um, uh, for the response of Iraqi society. to what has been done to it over the previous uh, years and, uh, and decades. Thank you, um, Ahmed. Now, my next question is, you chose a different person to illustrate each of the main conflicts Iraq has experienced. And each of these characters come from very different backgrounds and locations. And the question for you is, how did you go about identifying them And what were the challenges you encountered in, in reaching these, um, uh, these individuals in your documentary? Okay. طبعا كل كل شخصيه من هاي الشخصيات هي قبل يعني من من اكتشفتها وعشت وياها فتره خلال رحله التصوير ومع هاي الشخصيات اكتشفت بانه هاي الشخصيات هو كل واحد بيهم يجسد ويمثل مرحله معينه او حقبه معينه بتاريخ هذا البلد. So he's explaining that he spent a considerable amount of time with each of the characters in the film and um, uh, got to know them very well. And he and the point for him is that each of these individuals in the film represents a particular historical phase and experience um, in, in Iraq's recent history. Tfaddan. <تصفيق> بالإضافة إلى 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 رحلتي ويا كل شخصية طبعا عدنان تعرفت عليه بطريقة غريبة صراحة كنا بتصوير فيلم تصوير فيلم الرحلة لمحمد دراجي كنا أثناء هذا التصوير بالليل كنت أروح ويعني كنت أذهب وأرجع من بالقرب من المحط بالقرب من القطارات المهجورة فكنت أسمع صوت لشخص يهتف بنص الليل فكان هذا الصوت ياخذني دائما فرحت بقيت أبحث عن هذا الصوت منو هذا الشخص شو يسوي هنا شنو 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 جاي يحكي شنو يريد يطلع من داخله اوكي فبقيت ابحث وراء لحد ما اكتشفت عدنان عدنان هاي الشخصيه الاسطوريه بالنسبه لي صراحه شكرا سو هي سيز يو نو ان سم كيسز هي ات واز كويت ذا كوينسيدنس ثرو ويتش هي ميت ذيس كاركترز سو ات جيفز ذا اكزامبل اوف عدنان اند ات ذا تايم احمد واز وركينج اون ذا موفي ذا جيرني باي محمد دراج And he was constantly going back and forth near the train station. And he would hear all these noises emanating from the station of someone um, uh, shouting slogans, if I understood you correctly. And he became very curious and interested and, and then invested a lot of time in getting to know Adnan, to getting to learn more about his life and ultimately featuring Adnan in, in the fifth story. <تصفيق> بالتالي من 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 لقيت عدنان صار هذا الشخص يسلط الضوء على الـ الـ على الـ على المشاعر القديمه اللي بداخلي اوكي من خلال عدنان اكتشفت اكو هواي اشياء بالقصه الخامسه واكو هواي اشياء داخل احمد ومر بها احمد مر بها عدنان فبالتالي صرت ابحث عن بقيه الشخصيات وعدنان هو اللي خلاني هو اللي استفزني انه اذهب بعده إلى آخين المقاتلة في جبال سنجار وإلى نصار الصبي البدوي في صحراء الموصل وإلى والدي اللي كان جزء من من عمله ودفان بالحرب العراقية الإيرانية. So it was really Adnan at the train station who served as as the catalyst for his search for the other um, characters who appear in the film because he felt 
that Adnan in a very powerful way was expressing not only his own, his own feelings and sentiments, but also those that had been building up inside uh, Ahmed about the situation Iraq is, is in. And it was on this basis that he felt motivated and compelled to begin searching for um, uh, and getting to know the other three characters. Shukran. Okay. 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 فبالتالي بقيت ابحث وراء هاي الشخصيات اكتشفت عوالم ثانيه واكتشفت مشاعر ثانيه جديده غير اللي احمد مر بيها وغير اللي انا شاهدتها طبعا لان هم كل واحد بيهم خاض تجربه بطريقه بطريقته الخاصه وبعين الخ... وبطريقه الخاصه هو يشوفها غير ما احمد يشوفها اكيد فصرت صار عندي هذا الفضول انه اشوف كل واحد بيهم شلون شاهد هاي الحرب وبقيت ورا ما خذت هاي الرحلة ويا كل هاي الشخصيات بقيت أبحث عن العلاج وين 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 ممكن ألقى 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 الشيء اللي اللي ممكن يجلب قليل من السكون بداخلنا وهذا الصراع والضوضاء والنويز هذا اللي بداخلنا اللي نشعر به طول اليوم you know شكرا so um, uh... On the one hand, he felt these other characters also in a certain way reflected emotions and, <clears throat> excuse me, feelings that Ahmed had, but also each had their own very specific and particular and, and own experience and, and responses and sentiments because um, uh, they were all involved in, in different conflicts and had different experiences of them. But Ahmed also felt it was important to examine and search for resolution and how, despite all these um, uh, varying challenges and emotions, it would also be possible for each of the characters to find a modicum of inner peace, Lu'ai, if I, if I got that correct. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, Ahmed, Su'al al-akhir ila. And you seem to place mm -hmm. a lot of emphasis on sound and sight, almost as much as you do on dialogue. And quite a few segments in the fifth story are filmed in various shades of darkness. Um, is there a particular message that you're seeking to convey through these elements? Okay. خلينا نكون شوية يعني مو بعيدين وإنما شوية خلينا نعوف الأشياء الكلاسيكية اللي هي الرسائل والكذا والآخره أنا صراحة اللي 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 صار من خلال الصوت أو الضوء أو الحوار وإلى آخره بداخل هذا الفيلم أو الصمت أو الطبيعة بداخل هذا الفيلم هو أعتقد بأنه الـ 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 هي عبارة عن ذاكرة للفنان الصانع لصانع هذا الفيلم أوكي اللي للذاكرة اللي اللي للصور اللي مر بها خلال هاي الرحلة الطويلة أوكي فشلون يجي جسد هاي الذاكرة بأي طريقة فيجي بطريقة الصوت أحيانا أحيانا تلقى بطريقة الصمت أحيانا تلقاها بطريقة الضوء أحيانا تلقاها بطريقة الحوار الداخلي اللي دائما الشخصيات أغلب الأحيان ما تحكي بطريقة مباشرة تحكي بطريقة داخلية. Okay. So so often um, as as you will have seen these these characters don't speak in a very direct uh, way about their experiences and for Ahmed um, the use and deployment of sight and sound of light and darkness. Was also much uh, was also very much a function of mobilizing memory and deploying memory and using these these elements to strengthen and amplify the memories of not only Ahmed as the director of this film but also of the characters who he sought to portray in the fifth story. Okay, I think we have seen these elements, which are the sound, the light, and the other things that were the most important in the film. It was a way to create 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 a way to
او غضب والى اخره وثوره وتفاصيل بقيه طبعا طبعا كل هاي المشاهد اللي شاهدها احمد خلال هاي الرحله او هاي الشخصيات اللي شاهدوا هذا هاي المشاهد اللي كانت كل مشهد كانوا يشاهدونه هو كان انتقاله بحياتهم بشكل عام you know؟ يعني كانوا كل 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 جثه شاهدوها او كل شخص يطلق عليه النار او لاخره كانت هاي بمثابه انتقاله كبيره جدا بالنسبه لي انا يعني ايضا حسيت بهذا الشعور باللحظات اللي كنت اشاهد بها هاي المشاهد نو سو سو ذا يوز اوف ذيز اليمنتس اي تراي تو سامرايز واز واز اولسو انتندد از ا ا فيكل um to convey the mixture and the contradictory presence of of all the various um experiences and emotions that were felt not only by Ahmed but also by the characters in his movie lo i i think i may have missed something in that or um was was, was, was please uh yeah i guess uh, if ahmed if you can repeat your idea one more time okay تمام تمام اوكي اللي هاي هاي العناصر اللي اللي كنا يعني الصوت او الضوء او الصوره والى اخره بداخل هذا الفيلم هي عباره عن خليط لهواجس ومخاوف و... وكثير من ال... من المشاعر السيئه اللي كان اللي اللي, اللي مروا بها ذول الشخصيات خصوصا الاطفال طبعا هاي يعني كل كل مشهد يشاهده الطفل من من مشاهد القتل او العنف او الى اخره يسوي فد يخلق فد نوع من الـ من الـ من الـ يخلق فد نوع من الغضب بداخله وهذا الغضب بعد بالتالي يتحول الى 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 عنف اوكي فبالتالي هذا هاي هاي العناصر حاولت قدر الامكان من خلالها اجسد هذا العنف هذا هاي الخلاصه للعنف اللي شاهدناه طيله هاي الفترات. So I'll, I'll give a very short um, uh, supplementary summary, which is that the 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 not the elements of sight and sound and and the way they were used in in a sometimes disconcerted way were meant to convey and amplify um, uh, the the very different um, uh, emotions of fear. and and of anger that were experienced by his characters and Iraqi society as a whole during the period i think his um i don't think i've i've done his full response adequate justice um but i'll 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 leave it uh, at that ahmed thank you very much أبوي صار يرسم ملامح الغضب اللي صارت تظهر عليه وتاخذ شكل جديد بعد ما تركت سلاحي بلاستيكي وأخذ يتحول بداخلي إلى سلاح حقيقي بعدها صار يحاول يمنعني برسمة ملامح جديدة بالوقت اللي شافني أتخفى من عنده حتى لا يشوفني وانا احمل بندق يدي كلانشينكوف حتى التحق بالمقاتلين. And that was a scene of uh, Ahmed's father, one of the main uh, characters in the film, drawing his uh, memories of the war between Iran and Iraq during the 1980s. Uh, Luai, if we could now turn to you, um, producing a film in Iraq. and doing it from istanbul rather than from uh, within the country must have involved a series of of difficult challenges that you don't often encounter in your work as a producer um perhaps i should start by asking you how you ended up working on this project with ahmed thank you for uh, hosting this meeting it's my pleasure to be with you today well, thank you for joining we're most welcome Uh, so my relationship with Ahmad goes back uh, to maybe two 
and a half years. Um, it was a total coincidence that we met via a platform, basically. Uh, it's a D word uh, platform, which is basically for documentary filmmakers. Uh, uh, he sent me an email and it was the night of the Oscar, by the way, two years ago, almost. And uh, at that night, he sent me the, a very brief email uh, telling me that I'm a young filmmaker looking for a producer. Here's my idea. Uh, and here is a short link or some segment of my work. So I opened the link and uh, it was seven minutes. I watched four minutes and I paused it and sent him an email back saying, let us talk immediately. Mm -hmm. I sensed a talent. I sensed uh, a really a young uh, director who has a really very high potential. And uh, from that time on, we started this relationship. Uh, definitely um, being um, in two different locations in Istanbul and in Baghdad uh, posed a challenge. What were the main uh, challenges that you faced? Uh, traveling to Turkey, uh, to uh, Baghdad was not uh, an easy ride. Uh, I didn't do it, but luckily Ahmed uh, with his team, with, the, uh, with that team that we set up to get together, uh, production manager and the DP and the rest, uh, we managed to... Um, uh, deal with the project from A to Z remotely. Uh, luckily, we met in Istanbul a couple of times, more than a couple of times, actually. And we discussed all the elements. And I was, you know, uh, we are living in a new reality nowadays. I don't have to be in the field, you know, as a producer, I don't have to be, uh, you know, uh, with the crew filming. Uh, I was supporting him, you know, uh, with all the required. and. Uh, it took us at least one more year to finish filming, and then we started mm -hmm. the more challenging period, which was the editing period. Yeah. Uh, if I may continue with that Please. part. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, for after Sorry, actually, if, if, if I can, because I'd like to put in another question that I think is probably relevant to, to the issue you're now going to address, which is that if one considers the different roles of the director and the producer, um, my sense is that the director is primarily responsible for creative content, and you as a producer are more um, devoted to resolving the practical issues of, of uh, bringing this film uh, into the world. And I was curious if, for example, in the editing process, um, uh, these issues came up and whether they caused um, uh, any issues in the working relationship and how you dealt with them and resolved them? Well, let me start by saying that I consider part of my role to be a creative producer. So I'm somehow engaged in the creative aspect of the work and uh, in the writing of the film, we wrote it together, especially with the initial proposal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was engaged in the creative uh, part alongside the administrative, uh, financial, and uh, the legal part to some, to some extent. So um, at that point, uh, when we decided to do the editing work, uh, we moved from Baghdad to Lebanon mm -hmm. uh, for the lack of, uh, I would say, based on Ahmed advice, he was looking for a creative editor also, which was really uh, rare and scarce in uh, Baghdad, in Iraq. So we moved to Lebanon and we camped there for three months. Mm -hmm. um, so you were able to work together in person. Uh, exactly, no. exactly. We moved there for three months and it was really very tough and challenging experience being in Beirut and I am in Turkey going back and forth. Uh, he stayed here for a while. Uh, eventually, what happened is that we finished with the, with the second, maybe, or the third draft cut. Um, and the uh, Iraqi revolution or uprising, I would say, in late 2020, uh, 2019 started. 
and Ahmad couldn't stay in Beirut any more minutes. He wanted to join and uh, he jumped right away in the first plane. He said, I have to be, I have to take part of that. And maybe that would add to the story. And I agreed as a producer to take that risk. Mm -hmm. And he flew back to Baghdad and he participated in the uprising in late 2019. And actually, we incorporated that part yeah, in the did. story, which was very obvious. Mm -hmm. Then later, uh, we had another challenge, which was uh, continuing the editing process. Um, we, uh, for some reasons, the editor decided to move uh, for personal reason uh, to Germany. And then uh, we had to continue with another editor. And also we had the uh, COVID-19 eruption. It was a big challenge. Now we had to work remotely, producer in Istanbul, director in Baghdad, and uh, editor, the new editor Bingo. in Hamb Hamburg, Germany. Oh. Mm. Yeah. So it took us another three months mm. to continue the work, or maybe four months. Uh, it was really very tough and challenging. Can uh, uh, you can imagine what what usually take us take, takes us uh, one minute will take fifteen or ten minutes to change. Mm -hmm. You know, you know the Zoom environment is not always the friendly way, especially with such type of work. Mm -hmm. Especially that this is the first time Ahmed is working with this new editor, never met before in the same place. But uh, after back and forth and a lot of challenges, we made it. I was really happy with that, you know, with the end results. And eventually uh, it went to IDFA, which was the big prize for us to take part of that uh, event, regardless of the final and pleasing outcome of winning uh, that award. Great. Well, that's the perfect segue uh, to you, uh, Ottawa, because you've previously spoken about the importance of expanding the opportunities uh, for those in and from the region uh, to represent their realities and, and, and experiences and to not only have these represented uh, for them uh, by others. And, and I guess um, the obvious question, perhaps uh, somewhat silly, but it does appear right away is why do you consider this a, a priority? Well, I think uh, first, thank you, Moin, and thank you, Lutfi Rabbani Foundation, and welcome to all the guests. We at Itfa. Thank you, Arwa we, and uh, Itfa. We are truly very, very happy and proud to to work together with you, but also to Likewise. present to present the fifth story with you to to welcome Luay and Ahmad. Um, to answer your question, I think I, I was thinking about that uh, honestly when listening now to Ahmad and then to Luay. And I was feeling like a bit embarrassed by the idea that we give opportunity. Because I think that it is an opportunity for us to listen to them and to watch their films first, before the fact that we offer them an opportunity of the platform. Um, in, in this sense, I would say the way that Ahmed spoke about fear, about fear growing up, about a bomb that sounds like a cow, and this film that he made, when I remember when I watched the first time, I was like, what is happening there? Why is this angry filmmaker in Iraq with all the pain taking these moments of contemplation, creating this very aesthetically profound structure of his film? What's happening there? It's something new, it's something interesting. But then gradually living this experience of watching the film and then listening to, uh, uh, to the people behind it, I feel we have all seen so many films about Iraq made by people who just went there to basically, most of the films we saw about Iraq with an exception of two or three films only that came from Iraqi filmmakers and, and were seen around the world. Maybe a hundred films were made on Iraq since 2003 by uh, Western filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And basically, not to say that it's wrong to make uh, such films or that they are not important, but they go there to look for the Western angle. So they go there to look for uh, the, the relevance to Western politics, for example. They go there to say that Colin Powell was lying 
They go there to say that uh, George W. Bush was, did a terrible job. They go there to say that the war on Iraq was wrong, which are all statements that I would subscribe to. However, but, they, they, they do not give me this experience, this visceral, personal experience that is life-shaping, life-changing, that Ahmed can give me. And so it's, a, a, sorry to interrupt you, but it's not just a matter of principle. There are also, let me call them, I don't know, aesthetic aspects or, um, uh, I mean, there, there is a, there is an added value, if I can use that crude term, um, to having uh, the region, voices in the region represent themselves that goes beyond the principle of, of um, uh, accepting that the region's citizens have a right to represent themselves. You know, I think absolutely the ethical and the aesthetic are very difficult to, yeah. Yeah, very difficult to, to, to separate here. Mm. But I must say that, you know, uh, uh, Iraq is now remembered as the country with wars and, and uh, explosions and the terrible dictator and then uh, jihadism and whatever. Mm. But Iraq is also a country that brought history, some of the greatest science, some of the greatest poetry, some of the most important literature in, in, for, for centuries. Uh, and when we, we look at this, I mean, it's at the end of the day, we all know that Mesopotamia brought the first mythology, brought the first civilizations to our history. Really? I thought it was the Midwest. <laughs> yeah. And then when we, when we look at this and we, we think in any way that Iraq's new generations, Ahmed's generation, are simply just about explaining to us uh, what is the truth and what is reality and so on, I think we would be very wrong. That is a very small part of what they do because they tell us about the truth through means of very, very singular personal eyes, personal expressions. And I think this is what makes it worthwhile here. If I may, I think it's, it's what I was thinking about here. And I think this is very relevant to the work you try to do at the Firabani Foundation, but also to ITFA and to, to, to our world. This world is so interconnected. It's like magic. So when we listen to Ahmed, for example, he mentions that uh, uh, he first uh, started his career working with the Iraq Independent Film Center. And that the first beginning of this film was when he met the character in the train station while he was working with Mohammed Daraji. Mohammed Daraji is one of the few Iraqi filmmakers we know. But what I want to add here is that Mohammed Daraji is my generation, my age, a bit older than Ahmad. Uh, quite a bit, but that's fine. We can be complimentary. Mohammed Daraji was a teenager under like was a child basically when he had to flee Iraq and he was very very young when he was roaming the streets of Europe alone really at a very young age to end up as a refugee as a child refugee in the Netherlands and to become a Dutch citizen and gradually study film and then go back to his home country of Iraq and establish a, a, a film center and start making films from his own country. And then when we look at this little story, we discover that the Raji went back, Ahmed met him there when Ahmed was now the younger one. And Ahmed started working with the Raji and then made his film and he found Blue A. And the film found its way back to Itfa, to Amsterdam and to this screening that we are doing. Mm -hmm. It is a very small world mm -hmm. and nothing that we plant, nothing good that we plant in this world will go uh, in vain. It's, it's truly, uh, to me, this is very meaningful and very moving. And I think, I truly, I feel humbled that it is not us who give opportunities to these people. Well, it's them who, who enrich our lives. It is, we just allow them to enrich our lives and we are the winners here. Point taken, but it's uh, nevertheless, I think, um, well worth noting that that um, this is a, a point of view and and a principle that you have been thankfully able to promote uh, during your tenure at uh, at IDFA, whereas one can think of perhaps others who 
would see things uh, very differently. Um, before turning to audience questions, we'll show one more clip from the fifth story. Um, its character appears to reference Al Shabi's uh, famous poem, The Will to Live, which helped inspire the Tunisian uprising in order to complement, uh, contemplate rather, Iraq's future. إذا الشعب يوما أراد الحقوق والمطالبة فلا بد أن يطالب بها فلا بد أن يطالب بها هذه تحورها تحويرها مليون the fifth story, a film by Ahmed Abed, uh, produced by Luay Haffar and bought to Idfa by Orwa uh, Nairabiya. And um, our first audience question is from Manar, and it's a question for Ahmed. And Manar asks uh, whether you are still in touch with uh, characters in the film. I, I presume that's a definite yes in the case of your father, um, but it re refers also to the others. And if so, um, have they been able to view the fifth story and how did they respond to it? Uh, Luai, maybe you would like yeah. to uh, translate the question. السؤال أحمد إنه هل لا تزال على اتصال أنت مع الشخصيات وهل تسنى لهم مشاهدة الفيلم أو الاطلاع على النتائج؟ أكيد أكيد بعدني على تواصل ويا الشخصيات وبس للأسف يعني لحد الآن حاولت قدر الإمكان إنه أجيب الشخصيات حتى يشوفون الفيلم بس ما جاي يصير هذا الموضوع راح أحاول مرة أخرى أنه أخليهم أخلي الشخصيات تشاهد الفيلم بطريقة معينة يا أما أروح لهم يا أما أرسل لهم أو بس المهم أنه يشوفونه. So um, yes, he's definitely still in touch um, with the characters. Unfortunately, he has not been able um, to find the means to allow them to, to view the movie, but it's something that continues to preoccupy him. And um, he hopes uh, to have the opportunity soon to, to be able to uh, have a viewing of the film for the characters who, 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 are, who, who are in it, sorry. Um, the, ne the next uh, question is from uh, Aisha and it's also for Ahmed. And uh, Aisha asks, what is the significance and meaning of water in the movie since it is such a repeated motif? أحمد السؤال له علاقة باستخدام المياه داخل الفيلم هل له دلالة معينة لأنه ورد أكثر من مرة داخل الفيلم أوكي هو مو هي مو فقط المياه يعني بالتالي هو الطبيعة بشكل عام ما أخذ دورها داخل القصة الخامسة لأنه أعتقد بأنه إحنا كثير 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 نشبه الطبيعة بمشاعرنا بتقلباتنا بمزاجياتنا بكل شيء يعني كل شيء نمر به هو موجود بالطبيعة بالتالي فبالتالي هاي الطبيعة هي تعكس صورتنا بطريقة معينة بطريقتها هي الخاصة أوكي باعتقادي أنا ما أعرف وجهة نظري هاي. So I'll I'll, I'll try to translate that um, but if I understood you correctly Ahmed you're saying that um, we are a reflection of our environment. And um, the environment is central um, uh, to our being. And therefore, it's also very important to represent it in the work we do. Do I, did I get that broadly correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. 
Um, the, the next question is from uh, Lambrecht and um, uh, also for Ahmad. And he's basically asking about your uh, future plans. Are you planning to make uh, uh, more documentaries? Are you planning to make them about Iraq? When can we expect your next, uh, your next work? So, هل أحمد له علاقة بعملك القادم هل تنوي الاستمرار في الوثائقي وهل سيكون من العراق ومتى من المتوقع أن ينتهي؟ أوكي صراحة أنا ضد تسمية وثائقي أو روائي هي بالتالي كله هو فيلم يعني هم باعتقاد إنه هو فيلم بالتالي فإحنا ننقل تجربتنا من خلال هذا الفيلم إذا كان روائي أو وثائقي بس التجربة الجاية راح تكون روائي بطريقة مغايرة بطريقة مختلفة تماما راح أحاول هاي المرة إنه أتطرق لمواضيع ثانية جريئة جدا وأيضا حتة بالعراق. So um, uh, he he is uh, he is still at work and for his for his next work he's actually planning on making um, a feature movie a, a dramatization rather than a documentary and in Ahmed's own words well of course they are I'm only translating them um, uh, he. Okay. He, he plans also um, to uh, very courageously address specific unnamed issues, which he assures us are issues that are alive in Iraq. Tfaddan. Okay. بالتحديد بخصوص الحرب الأهلية أو الطائفية اللي الكل تخجل أنه تشتغل على هذا الموضوع بداخل العراق. بس هالمرة راح يكون بدون خجل وبدون أي 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 تغاضي عن هذا الموضوع. راح أتناول الموضوع بطريقة من خلال عائلة من خلال عائلة واحدة بداخل هذا البلد شنو اللي صار بهم؟ um, the, 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 civil, the civil war in, in Iraq or the civil conflict in Iraq is very much a taboo for um, Iraqi filmmakers and Ahmed is hoping uh, to, to make a movie about this phase of Iraqi history um, th by dramatizing the experiences of a single family during this period. Um, uh, a question um, for uh, uh, Orwa. You're very experienced in the film industry. How do you see film festivals developing in the future and how has it changed in the recent past? Well, this is a very, uh, <laughs> very, very interesting question. Of course, um, we don't know. I, I truly believe that it, this is what's interesting in this moment is the fact that we do not know, that we need to be open, that we need to be flexible and to, un to, to accept the fact that uh, things are uh, not going to be the same and things will not be what we might uh, guess they guess now we don't we have to be open i know that it is a very interesting uh, a very challenging element in in life to be open to the unknown and to wait and see what will happen but look at how ahmed lived and made the fifth story i have no doubt that he didn't have a clue about what was going to happen <coughs> the next day uh, and in in the same line i think that to me, at least, film festivals are mostly about celebrating film and, and the art of, of cinema, the art of documentary cinema, in the case of ITFA, by creating a social experience, an experience where people actually see each other, laugh together, cry together, uh, feel the, the pulse, the collective pulse, and then go out from the cinema and to their homes and to their other friends. And then there's a certain kind of civic and aesthetic debate that goes and becomes part of the life of the city, of the life of society. And when we cannot do that, we accept to be going online as a temporary solution. We will not stop, so we show films to people at home. That is better than nothing, but better than nothing is not good enough. Uh, I have to be optimistic and trust that now with the current uh, uh, development, scientific progress about the vaccination and understanding the, the COVID-19 pandemic and the vaccination happening a bit faster now, hopefully, that we will be back to being a society that meets and, uh, you know, it's part of who we are humans, we are social. 
Uh, and when that happens, we would just be coming out from this experience after learning about new things. So I, I think we're all learning so much. It's a very difficult and challenging moment, but we are learning that there are things that we can do online well, that things that there are many things that we cannot do online also, and that we are just missing out on in this current situation. So I, uh, I hope that we will be back to seeing each other, touching each other, uh, and and yeah, being in a cinema together, it's it's a feeling that I think is, um, you know, one of the greatest film critics or, or uh, theorists of cinema in history, André Bazin, once said that cinema was an anthropological necessity because we humans need this ritual, need to go, part, spare the time, take the walk, or the drive, go into this hall, turn the lights off, and then laugh, cry, and think together. Oh. And we need that, and we will try to uh, to keep on insisting on it. And again, we are learning that there are also things that can add value online. So on, on those, uh, please, <laughs> did you want to add something to I? No, um, uh, you know, just uh, celebrating his answer because yeah. This is what we're looking for as producers, you know. This is uh, where we meet. This is where we uh, mingle and enjoy our works together. Without festivals, I don't think we will have the celebration. So, yeah, but we don't know, as Orwa said, what will happen in the future. Well, on, on, with those um, uh, valuable uh, sentiments, we've come to the end of, uh, of this episode. Um, by way of conclusion, the Lutfiya Rabbani Foundation is a nonprofit foundation established in The Hague, the Netherlands, in 1979. Over the past 41 years, it has worked to promote Euro Arab understanding and exchange through education, dialogue, and culture. You can learn more about the foundation and its programs at rabbanifoundation.org. The International Documentary Film Festival Amsterdam, IDFA, is today the world's largest international documentary film festival. It strives to screen films with social themes that reflect the spirit of the time and has various programs to assist filmmakers and emerging talent. You can learn more about it at www.itfa.nl. And um, finally, I'd like to um, uh, give my particular thanks to uh, Marina and Marian and their colleagues at the Lotfia Rabbani Foundation, to Sofia at uh, IDFA, and um, particular thanks to our technical director, uh, Hazan Sakh uh, al Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you to our guests, and good night. Mm -hmm.